Welcome back to Wednesday's This Woman. Still to come today, writer Anne Hooper on how to make divorce easier for the children. And Jordan will be telling us what it's like to be the new Mrs. Andre. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Oh. Uh, and we've got a few emails in on the birds and the bees We front. have. This is a funny one. Um, this is from Jamie in Bath. I thought it said Jamie in the Bath, but it's Jamie in Bath. <laughs> My mum told me the facts of life when I was off school poorly. She sat me down and said, now your dad doesn't want to tell you this, so it's up to me. Now, you know how a bird and a bee, well, you know. It's a seed thing that, that goes in. Then she went back to her ironing. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, we'd already covered it in school, or I'd be very confused. <laughs> well, this one's from Lucy in Bexley. She says, I told my daughter the basics about the birds and the bees when she was seven and dropped her off at school in the morning. She jumped out of the car and screamed at the top of her lungs, Bye, Mum! Will Daddy be planting his seed into you tonight? <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't do that thing about the funny feeling that mummy and daddy get when they cuddle. No, definitely not. Um, right, uh, we've got Anne Hooper coming on very soon. Now, she's written this book called Getting Your Children Through Divorce. Um, actually, she did the first version 30 years ago, but, you know, felt that things had changed so much in, in that time that there was a need to update it, which, you know, obviously it has. But, I mean, your dad left when you were very small, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I was so, very young. It was about 40 years ago now. I think I was about much. four at the time, yeah. yeah. I mean, what do you remember of that? I mean, do you remember sort of being told and... No, not know, very much. All I remember is, I remember upheaval. I remember, you know, arguments and fighting. And I remember this upheaval moving from this sort of very um, big house that was, you know, quite expensive to a very, very dismal, dank, horrible grey house. It just seemed grey. Um, but my mum, my mum never actually said anything to us. And, and the reason... We knew, because I've been thinking about it since speaking about it earlier to you lot, I do remember my dad saying, I'm not coming back. And I just remember being horribly confused by that. Why is he not coming back? You know, not particularly upset, but, you know, just a bit confused. And, and the other thing that really upset me at the time was my mum, seeing my mum cry, you know, when mm. she didn't expect us to see her cry. And it was like, why is mum upset? You know, and then sort of, it, it, we just kind of got used to the idea of him not being there. It was, it was a strange thing, but being so young. And I've asked my sister if she remembers any more, and, and she doesn't either. So there was never that official thing that you have now. I mean, on reflection, do you think you needed that? Do you think that would have helped? Um, I don't know. I, I've got no idea. I don't think it's affected me uh, that badly. I mean, obviously it does when, when you lose a parent when you're very young. Um, but it was... It was the, I think the thing that affected me the most was the stigma that was attached to kids in those days. You know, coming from a one-parent mm. family, or a broken home, they used to call it. Mm. Yeah. And I remember we had to move schools and everything. We ended up in this new school, and it was like, we were kind of branded as these kids mm. that were from a broken home. And so, you know, every time something went wrong, we were the first to be suspected. Mm. It was that kind of thing. So that, you know, it did confuse me. And it wasn't until very much later, when I, we were about sort of 10, 11, that my mum did actually sit down and explain to us what happened, you mm. know, where my dad went and why we never ended up seeing him much. Yeah. Well, I suppose that is one of the things that has changed, that we're much more open with children now. I mean, yeah. presumably, more well, with you two, you, did you sit down and have the conversation, even though the kids were so young? Yeah, well, um, Shane and Jake were four and seven, um, and I had to tell them. I hadn't told them for ages because, obviously, me and, me and Shane weren't arguing or anything in front of them, and everything seemed normal to them, but it was coming out in the papers the next day, so I had to go up and tell them because I didn't want them to see So what was going to be in the papers? all about what Shane had been up to and it oh, was right. all so splashed over the paper. Somebody yeah, else and, and so it was kind of like I didn't want them to open the paper, you know. So I had to go up and, and tell them and it was probably the hardest thing I've ever, ever, ever done in my the life. The shock must have been... Just the shock. I think probably for them, because we hadn't been rowing, so they went from having two parents who seemed to love each other and get on to mum coming up and saying, actually mummy and daddy are going to school to mm. separate for a while mm. and you, you think you know your children but Shane who was seven he was the laid back one and I thought he'll just go quiet walk out the room and deal with it in his own little way just curled up in this fetal position and absolutely sobbed and screamed oh. for full on an hour and um, and that really upset me his reaction and Jake was four so he just cried because Shane was crying because he didn't have a clue what the hell was going on to be honest with you mm. and then just cried because he wondered who was going to buy the DVDs at Christmas <laughs> <laughs> you know what kids do they love oh. me like that but um, yeah it really was the hardest thing mm. I've ever done and was your David was four but Emily was much younger wasn't she yeah, so David, David was four and Emily was only a year old when me and their dad split up so she doesn't really remember much about it but I think even though he was only four, 
um, it, it affected him in his little way, you know. I mean, like you say, to mm. be honest, he was more bothered about, you know, the, the toys and bits and bobs, you mm. know. But to be honest, it did affect him. And, you know, when we, we were by ourselves, I, I knew he was sad at times. There were times when he was sad. Um, but I didn't actually go up to him and go, oh, are well, you sad about, mm. you know, me and your dad? I, I would say things to him like, you know, are you okay, darling? Is there anything that... See, that's talking? the thing, I suppose, at that age, I mean, how much... How much do you go into it with them, like, you know, asking them to go over their feelings or, I mean, even in terms of detail, mm. I mean, you wanted to tell the boys before they'd hear it from gossip at school, yeah. but do you tell them the detail of no, what's happened? No, I didn't or? actually. I mean, I just told them that, you know, sometimes when adults get to a point where, you know, they don't want to be together anymore, maybe they don't love each other anymore, but we still loved them. I didn't mm. say, Daddy's met his mother person and, uh, <laughs> and he's left your mother up the swanee. <laughs> Do you think, I mean, looking back, I mean, in hindsight, it's a great thing, but do, would you have done it any differently? No, I think I would have been less, I protected them so much, I always have all the way through, to the point where I'm, I didn't tell them who was to blame at all, and so that it got to a point where Daddy was going up and up on a pedestal, and I was just the really miserable cow at the bottom. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I was the one that was upset, and Dad was mm. just getting on with his life, and I wish I'd have not said, oh, Dad did this and Dad did that, but just explained a bit more that, you know, Dad has met someone yeah. else and, and I'm not going to stay with him now because yeah. of that. Oh, but that must be a very difficult show, mustn't it? Mm. Um, well, Anne Hooper is the lady who's written this book. She's a relationship uh, counsellor, and uh, so let's find out what she's got to say. Please welcome Anne Hooper. <laughs> Uh, we'll probably get more experience of this than we'd like on the table. Yeah. But, uh, Quite a um, lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Why did you feel that the need for a new edition after 30 years? I mean, clearly things have changed. Well, I, I thought there'd be lots of books like this out there because 30 years on you'd expect that. And then I had a real shock from a friend who had unexpectedly broken up with her partner. They had a four-year-old child. And I heard through my son, she, she's a former girlfriend of his, that uh, she had been to a bookshop to look for something that would help her and there wasn't a single thing there. And I thought, well, that's crazy and really we needed to do it again. Mm. So I rewrote the thing and I did it quite a lot differently this time because I did it completely from a child-centered point of view. Mm. The first book, the first edition, had been much more about um, the parents and how they could get on better so that this would work better with the children, which is good, but I'd, I'd got much more into what was absolutely the right thing for the kids. And I was interested that you were saying that you thought at the end of the day, um, you know, you got over it and it was all right mm. in the end, because we used to think that if kids' parents divorced, you know, their life was kind of ruined mm. forever. And in actual fact, there's been some really interesting new research recently that says that they take about two years to get over it and to get used to things and then provided they've got sort of congenial surroundings mm. at least two-thirds of them are absolutely fine mm. and there's one wonderful website now where kids actually talk about um, what it was like and you get things like, you know, I'm really glad that my stepfather was there now because he's been so helpful to me. Mm. I couldn't have got through this if he hadn't been so good. Mm. And I think we're getting a much more positive picture now. It can be done that way. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is a right and a wrong way to do it? I mean, in my situation, yeah. would you have done it any differently? Or? Um, well, what I do think is that if you can possibly tell the kids together, that's a good idea because... The trouble is that, and you were very good because you withstood the temptation, but the temptation is to say, and your father is mm -hmm. that, you know, and just to be horrible about the other partner. And indeed, if they're the, the one, if they are the one that's doing the telling, mm. they may do the same. So it's good to tell them at the same time. But then the level of honesty, I mean, you were saying that maybe in reflection you would have been... I just don't know whether I protected them a bit well, too much. <laughs> again, it also depends on the age because I don't think you can give a very young child a lot of detail. I think you want to give it a very simple explanation and maybe the detail needs to come later. So maybe, maybe doing, it, gra later with doing me, yeah. it gradually may well be the right way to do mm. it. It sounds as though you, you perhaps could Each have freed it different slightly. because they were yes. asking me different yes. questions and then one day yeah. brought it home to me because yeah. one of my sons said, well you were alright, you seemed to be fine because I never cried in front of them. Ah. And he was like 13, 14 mm, then yes. so then I kind yeah. of gave him a bit more information. But you did a very good thing which is that you did reassure them that both of you still carried on mm. loving them even though you didn't love each other because 
because I do think that's a tricky one. But that's one, not always you know. a situation. I mean, what if you're in a situation that Daddy, I mean, well, Carol, yeah, you, your dad tricky. didn't really want yeah. to come into yeah. your lives anymore, did you? So what, what do you no. say as a mother then? I think you have to be absolutely upfront about it. I don't think you want to be blaming. I think the best thing you can do is simply saying, this is how it is. It's really hard on all of us. I'm going to miss him. I'm sure you're going to miss him. But we're going to get on with our lives, and we're going to do well. And if you can try and make the rest of their life, and this, of course it's not always possible, but if you can actually try and make the rest of their life carry on much as it would have done normally, i.e. they can go to the same schools, if that's mm. possible, you may not be able to stay in the same house, so I, I sympathise with the, the grey cold house and all the rest of it. Mm. But um, if, if you can get something that remains the same, that's really helpful for them. Mm. I, was, I was talking to one of your um, assistants outside before, and he was saying that one of the most difficult things was not just the divorce, but going to the new school mm. as well. Mm. So an awful lot of change at the same time is not good for a kid. Mm.